far, we've talked about Uber Assist and its benefits. We've also talked about how to communicate with people with disabilities, use person first, and we've also broken down some barriers when assisting people with disabilities just by watching, asking, listening, and learning. Next up, we share a few tips when working with seniors or passengers with disabilities. These are going to be in addition to the tools you've got already, person first language and wall. People with mobility impairments are like myself. They may have difficulty with their hands, they may have mobility concerns with their legs, they may even use a manual folding wheelchair, or they could use crutches, or they could be someone that's pregnant even. Up next is a couple of tips to help specifically with people with mobility impairments. So for watch, it's giving the customer time to make their own way. Maybe they need a little more patience. For ask, it's true for everyone to not touch without permission. It's especially important for people with a mobility impairment to not touch without permission, mostly because it might knock them off their balance. And for listen, remember it's okay if the person says no thank you, to not assist, and for learn, learn what they've asked, learn what they've said, learn what they need. If the customer indicated, please leave the brakes on, then that's the best thing to do. And you can learn for next time, possibly my customer's gonna need to leave the brakes on. You know, many manual wheelchairs have the option of removing the wheels. Wheelchairs can fold, and they aren't as heavy as you think. Just ask a customer, how can I assist you? and they will describe to you how to fold their wheelchair or how dismantling their personal chair is best. I always say, if you don't know, ask. Now here is a video on how to accommodate a passenger who uses a wheelchair. Just to reinforce, riders are not to expect you to lift and transfer them in or out of your vehicle. People that use manual wheelchairs on a day-to-day -day basis will be able to lift and transfer themselves into your car without a problem. So let's watch the video. Enjoy. Passenger with a manual wheelchair. There are two types of wheelchairs, power and manual wheelchairs. Power wheelchairs require vehicles that have a lift or ramp. Manual wheelchairs come in two types, folding and non-folding. Folding wheelchairs are collapsible by removing the seat cushion and pulling up the seat, by moving a release bar or pulling a cord. This type of wheelchair can be stowed easily in a vehicle trunk or behind a seat. Ask the passenger for their recommendation regarding the best way to fold the chair. Non-folding wheelchairs can be easily disassembled for stowage. The large rear wheels have a button in the center of the wheel for removal. Push the button in, hold and pull the wheel straight out. To replace the wheel, keep the button depressed until the wheel is in place. Then release and give the wheel a tug to make sure it is securely fastened. Always lift these chairs by the frame, never by the wheels, armrest or footrest. Ask the passenger how to set the brakes. Next up, we talk about people with visual impairments or people who are blind, or even people who are partially sighted. For the watch, it's extra important to introduce yourself. As a person who is partially sighted, they're more likely to accept assistance from their Uber driver than they are from a stranger on the street. For ask, everybody's unique and different. If you wanna know how to assist somebody, it's best to say, how can I assist you? Or how can I guide you? Which leads us to listen and learn, kind of in a combined way. Everybody is unique. Some people may say, I can guide myself, thank you. Some people may say, please take my back. Can I take your shoulder? No one will ever ask you to take their arm and drag them. If they do ask to be guided, they could potentially say, can I please take your elbow? Let's watch the video that demonstrates how that works. Passenger who is blind or low vision, passenger with a service animal, a person with a service animal should always be allowed in your vehicle. Properly trained service animals will be easily guided into the back seat of the vehicle and onto the floor of the back seat. If it is raining or there is inclement weather, it is helpful to have a blanket or beach towel in your trunk. When guiding someone who is blind, 
place yourself next to the blind passenger and allow them to take your arm. Do not grab the passenger, just allow them to lightly grasp your elbow. Be sure to be very descriptive as you guide them into your car. Familiarizing blind passengers with their surroundings is welcome help. So notice two important takeaways from the video. One was about guiding and one was about service animals. So in terms of guiding, notice how the female Uber partner offered her elbow. She didn't drag the person, the person took her elbow. So the second takeaway from the video is that service animals are allowed in every vehicle. It's the law. You even risk being removed from the Uber platform if you do deny someone's service animal. And the interesting thing about service animals is that they're not only for supporting a person with a visual impairment or who is blind. Service animals can be for other things like anxiety or assisting someone in a manual chair. Whatever the size of your vehicle, if it fits a person, it fits a service animal. Service animals are trained to sit on the floor, no problem. So to walk you through assistance for our passengers who are deaf or hard of hearing, we've brought in my friend Sheffield, who is also deaf. He's going to share what his experiences are as an Uber driver partner, as well as an Uber rider. Firstly, I just want to say thank you so much for participating in Uber Assist. You're making the lives of the deaf community so much better. In my opinion, when your passenger is hard of hearing, there are three tips to provide them with five-star service. First tip, find the best way to communicate by first establishing eye contact. Second tip, switch to a visual note-taking if necessary. For example, pen and paper, texting. Third tip, be patient and approach them with a smile. An important tip that I learned working with Sheffield is that he uses touch to catch his attention. For example, a tap on the shoulder. And another tip that I learned is to talk directly to Sheffield, to talk directly to the customer and not the interpreter or not the support person. And that that's true for myself as well. Sometimes I have somebody assisting me and that you still talk to myself directly and not my support person. Now for someone who might have a speech impairment, be patient. Ask yes, no questions when you can. Don't interrupt. Most importantly, having one disability doesn't presume you have another disability. So if you have a speech impairment, it does not mean that you have an intellectual impairment. Let's review some tips about passengers who may have an intellectual, developmental, or psychological impairment. All three of these may be invisible. You might not even know. Keep in mind, it's never appropriate to ask what type of disability somebody has. It's a private question for friends and family only. Our job as Uber Assist Partners is still door-to-door -door service. And this doesn't change if a person has an intellectual or psychological or a developmental disability. It's still the wall. Watch, ask, listen, learn. For watch, say hello. And keep in mind, person first in perception and language. Ask. Ask, how can I assist you? And for listen and learn, remember that people with an intellectual or developmental disability are still adults. So respect what their answer is and learn what it is that they state that they need. So if they say, I'm fine with my seatbelt, thank you, we trust that they're okay. Whether or not a rider has dementia or Down syndrome or any other form of intellectual impairment, if the rider knows their end destination, that's all that's relevant to us. We are not medical professionals that can determine whether a person is capable to travel alone or not. Our best bet is they know where they're going, we're happy to give them a ride. So seniors, seniors could acquire a mobility impairment or have dementia. No matter what, it's still person first in perception and it's still breaking down the barrier using the wall. And most importantly, a bit of patience and understanding goes a long way.
Let's work together to make Uber the safest, most comfortable, most reliable option out there for the fastest growing segment of the population. Just imagine that older passenger being your mom or your dad or someone in your circle and treat them as you would like your family and friends to be treated.